Okay, right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, welcome back to Platt on a really cold and miserable day up here in the northeast. But, like everything else, you know, we've just got a plot on so that I'd spend the, um, the first part of the year of this video down home in my new 8x6. I haven't quite finished yet, I've just about got all my, my heat beds all finished, it's all topped up with sand, and of course, I've got a little heat cable. The warmer cable I sent away for it's making a little bit of difference. Um, it's 40, 51, 51 in here on a freezing day outside, so that's perfect for me. I don't want it any hotter than that. If I did want it any warmer, that it would be for leaks. Uh, I'm going to set onions away uh, at the back end of this video. I'm still waiting for them. I was hoping they'd come today when I started this video off, but uh, before that, I want to get these grapevines sorted out. If you remember last week's video, I chopped all the grapevines back to the main rod or what I wanted to keep for a, uh, to, make you, to make your own vine if you take the side shoots off, you build your framework up and then you cut your framework right back to the rods that you're keeping and that's, uh, that's what I did last week and of course this is what I've just brought down this morning I've been at the plot, I've just had a walk up, it's freezing cold up there but I like to pot up each day and just make sure there's been no extra damage done that's a bundle of canes that I took off the um, off the grapevine, off the black one. Now I'll, I'll sort them out in a minute, but before I do that, I want to show you these ones. Now this is uh, what I'm going to be putting these into. This is this is a, a tub of grapevine cuttings that I took last year, um, and this is where I like to grow them. But for this afternoon, I'm going to I'm going to try another method. Um, and I'm going to try rooting some smaller ones and some little peat blocks or coir blocks, what they call them. Now, I've got them soaked in water, just them, um, just fresh water, that's all. But uh, for this one, um, I've cut these back because I had quite a bit of green growth on top of these, so I've cut them back with a nice fresh bud. Now, I haven't had these out the pot yet, so I'm, um, this is going to be a first for me. And like I see, I like to leave mine as long as possible, right into the summer and even into autumn before I decide to pot them up. And uh, as I say, they were rooted um, last November, or the last solstice uh, last year. This is one I like to take the grapevine cuttings, but we're not too far away now, this weekend. We'll be at the solstice, so uh, the timing's just about right. So I'm going to tip this one out, and I'm just going to show you what I mean. Um, this is a new pot, and I'm going to put the new cuttings in. Uh, it's three quarters, it's a third full of really sharp sand on the bottom, and I'll show you how or why I like to put the sharp sand in the bottom. I'm just going to tip this out. Knock it off and there we are, that's first class sand. There's the third sharp sand here. And what, what these are doing, the rods, stick them up in the sand. Uh, you can use um, either a bit of honey, I've showed you before, a bit of rooting powder, um, it, or nothing to put them in bare root. But I like to just put a little cover on them just to make sure it's going to keep them, if there is anything in your compost that will rot them away which hopefully will not be, but um, just for protection, but you don't have to use anything but to me that's perfect, there's the, uh, there's last year's and the, them canes are all well rooted, they're beautiful so I'm just going to gently break that, pile up they're actually better rooted than what I thought, there's the sand falling away from the bottom and them canes should be perfect there's a really good root ball on them, which I'm pleased I like to keep as much as I can I'm just going to tear them apart and that's absolutely beautiful, look at the root ball on that and I'm going to take, a, take some of them away but that's a first class cane that one's not too bad either, nice little root on there but uh, that's why I like to leave them as long as possible I'm just going to cut them bottom roots away if I can find me, uh, find me nippers I'm just going to put them, put them bottom roots away give them a little bit of a haircut just so they'll fit into the pot nicely. Now, as I say, you don't want to knock too much of the soil away. That, to me, that's perfect. That's a lovely little key in there. It's got one, it's got two buds in there, and I've just got a bud in the bottom if I need be. But uh, don't worry about it because as long as you've got a first cast root system on there, that rod's going to grow away next year and it's going to romp away, it's going to give you a first cast clean. But that just shows you what you can do with just your off cuts from your grapevine when you cut it back. So. There we have it, we have uh, three quarters, we have a third full of sand, I've put this down there so I don't, I don't dirty my, um, 
completed that. I'm just going to put a little bit of compost in there. Now we even need compost. It's multi-purpose compost in sharp sand. And I, I keep saying this every time, it doesn't matter how much sharp sand really put in your mixture because it's not going to hurt it. If anything, it's going to give you over drainage and you're never going to flood your plants. You're never going to over water them. You might have to water them more, but uh, to me, that's a no-brainer. It's um, so I've just popped that in there, and that's that is just sitting level with the top of that pot. So with my fresh compost, perlite, nothing else, and that's just sitting on the top exactly where it was in the in the pot. I'm pleased with that really, it's uh, it's really grown by that. I'll just top that up. Tidy that up, and there we have it. It's a first class plant. Now that will sit there quite happy till next spring. If you want to, when you take your cuttings out, you can put them straight in the flowering position or wherever you're going to put them. But to me, I like to give them a good start off, and uh, you'll sit in them pots now for a good four or five months and then I can plant that up in the summer time in this in this final position uh, where at the side I'm going to put a couple of the other side of the greenhouse here it's a um, it's a west facing wall over the back here and on the wasteland I'm going to put a couple of vines along the back here I'm going to put some trellis up so I'll show you all that next year that's a that's about 10 videos away that hopefully so uh, that's that one done I've got a couple more to do there but I'll, uh, I'll do them later on pretty pleased with them and now what I want to do with this is to get these opened up and I'm going to, as I say I'm going to do these in two different ways um, I've sewn them, I've never sewn them on heat before, never so it's a first for me and all as well as uh, as well as you was watching um, I watched John Murphy, if you're watching John um, I was just taking a bit of your advice uh, from your, your Facebook page when you're rooting off your goji berries and your um, your other bits and pieces from your canes and I thought well you know if you're going to do that with the goji berries um, surely you'll be able to do it with the grapevine cuttings so I'm going to give it a try as I say I've never tried them growing on the heat before I've always screwed them this way on cold and I'll show you the way I do it in a minute the first job I want to do now that I've got the canes down I want to separate them into two different lots um, I've got the pencil canes very thin ones I like that one, very thin one, and which I'll use for the hotbed. And I've got some really thick ones, really nice thick ones, pencil thickness, like that one there. Probably going to get one off that one because it, the way it's bent it over there, I'll take it off. I like and I use a nice straight cutting, um, and I'll probably use this, these for the cool zones. But I'm going to sew through this bunch now. I've got my second as. I've got my seconds and I've got my little pinches and I've got a pinch for my daughter there, uh, where they go <laughs> the little there, uh, little scissors ideal, nice and sharp so I'll get through this bunch sorted and then we'll start planting, okay okay, right, we're back again I've uh, spent the last 5 minutes 10 minutes cutting up the vines cutting up all the steaks and I've left a couple that's just to show you um, when you take them off the vine what you're looking for depending on what sort of cutting you're wanting <coughs> I've got my pot here with a third full of sharp sand and I've cut my vines down and what I like to look for is at least two buds on the bottom and a nice bud on the top reason being you're going to push these right into the sand the bottom bud's going to sit in the sand the middle bud it's just going to sit above the compost and you've got to put it on the top so you hopefully you should get one or the other um, straighten and send up a nice green shoot for you for next year but there uh, as I say the bottom bud make sure it's nice and clean nice and fresh and you want to leave a good half inch string inch below that where you're cutting off so I'll show you here I mean I show you every year this is just a bit of a rough cut off um, this is where I cut away from the um, from the old vine. So what I'm looking for is a nice bud there, 
really nice bud there. I'm going to come about three quarters of an inch from there and cut him off nice and sharp. So that's your bottom bud. That's a nice straight cut which is going to sit flush in the bottom. Put it in your pot, depending on what size pot you're using. <clears throat> and there's a bud there that I want. And then your top bud is going to be a slanting cut. So if you are watering from the top, your water's going to come off the top of the vein and it's not going to waterlog. And you want to gain, you want to half an inch off there. So there you have your vein. You've got a flat bottom to sit in the compost or your sand. And you've got a, a top slit on the top, a slanting slit for any water to run off. But there, uh, you know me, I know water from over, up above, it's always from down below. So to me, that's a perfect cutting. And I've got, um, I've got about 20 there already chopped up. Lie them down, as you cut your veins, lie them down the way you're going to plant them. <coughs> so I've got a pot there now. <coughs> as I say, it's a third full, and I just want to dip that in, get it nice and clean. Just to cover the bottom, that's all, and give it a bit of air, give it a bit of protection, and then push it into the sand. Once again, nice. You always know your, your canes from your bottom. It's a nice, nice flat cut on the bottom. Two, so, and you can put three or four in a pot. You know, depends on how much space you've got. These aren't going to take up any room at all because once these are, are potted up, they're going to go straight back up the plot and they'll sit in the mill house until next year. I'm never in a hurry to get these rooted, but uh, I just want to try this new way of rooting stuff and just see the, see the difference in them. Once again, that's the third one. I'm going to push that in. And there we have it. Just a job. Three veins in there now. And of course, I'm just going to move up below the tripod where I've got me, uh, where I've got me mixing bench. And I'm just going to fill that. Get them. Canes nicely centralised. You can do that once you're uh, once you get the compost in. And then what you need to do is my what you use. Just pop that in there for the time being. It's my little yellow sofa. It always comes in handy for some week. It's a nice little dibber. <coughs> You've got your canes in your pot now. And then what you need to do is to really go around them and compact that compost in we should pack down really well because uh, with the sand that's in it we really do need contact with the compost from the root and then all I'm going to do is top that up about a half inch from the top and there we have it that is what I had before Tip them out and they've got a nice, nice little root system like that. Ten months later or a year later, let's say uh, these are going to be potted up and then say they'll make fantastic vines. Or well, these will be exactly the same next summer, as long as you look after them, they don't need any special treatment. Just keep them moist, good sharp sand, plenty of sharp sand there, free draining, then they, they'll root away. Fantastic for you. But they uh, I'll keep you updated on them on how they're growing. That one's potted up. And now what I want to do, I'll finish them ones off later, I'll put that to one side. I've got uh, at least three or four tubs there to pot up. So there'll be plenty of black ones. Uh, and what I've got here is one of my little proper gears. Now, make sure when you bring your trays in that they're all nice and clean. I was spent a good three hours out here last week um, washing all my pots down, washing trays down. A bit of jazz flow in the water, a little bit of disinfectant bit of milton, whatever, and uh, got them nice and clean. And that really is a good secret to uh, good husbandry, especially in the greenhouse. What you don't want is to be bringing in any trays with dirty soil on, or could have fungus, could have virus on, could have anything on them. Um, and of course, with the heat in the greenhouse, if you've got the heat on, it's going to spread. And just make sure that you check everything. If you haven't got time to wash them, just make sure you check everything. If you haven't got soil on the bottom, where slugs can hide because believe you me if you get a slug in your greenhouse and you start off January and February with a little bit of heat on all your seedlings you've got a slug in the greenhouse and it'll just munch its way through them I know believe you me I've had it um, so just make sure you 
green as they don't. So this is the second way I'm going to try. I've never tried it this way before, but uh, you know me, I like to try something different every year. Now these, I'm going to keep these, there's a little bit of heat in here, it's only 50, 55. Now there's the canes here. And these are a mini version of them ones. And what by I mean a mini version, exactly the same again. I'll cut the rod down, flat bottom, slant the top. The only difference with these is there's only two woods. One on the bottom for rooting, one on the top. Why I like to make two woods on them is because you're doubling the chances of either having one bud rotten off and one bud rooting. But this way I'm only going to do it one bud topping. Simple reason I want it to fit in my propagator. So if I, I pop that in there into the pod and I know I've got enough room for that propagator top just to sit on top of it. So once again, um, if I can find it, I've got my, my rooting powder and dip the end in there and I'm going to take one of these. What I found with these, you have to make it push my scissors right in, turn it around, make it look a little bit of an indentation then I'm just going to press that into there, now that's well in I can feel it touching the bottom I'm just going to work that around with my fingers and that is my new cutting well that's going to sit in that tray there, hopefully yep, perfect, push that down, we'll do it again just the right size, one bud, always look for a flat, flat end, you know if you're cutting from your, from your rod when you've been cutting them you'll probably get two or three out of each rod but just make sure you've got a nice bud in the bottom and a nice plump bud higher side on the top, your slanting top, quite easy to do and I'm there, uh, I'm looking forward to see how these, uh, how these turn out, just give a little bit of twist with that push it in so the buds nicely in that compost feel it on the bottom of my fingers now you can use I've got some coir blocks down there but I thought I'll use these um, these little peat blocks I've used these quite a few times for cuttings and that and they've, uh, they've worked really well if you remember the tomatoes from the me my old greenhouse last year when I took the, the suckers off the tomatoes and I rooted them in these and they rooted really well so I'm there uh, I'm going to try them in here so that's another one, I'll pop that in there, push it right at the bottom, there we have it, I'm just going to plot on here, work my way through it, now I've, what I've cut is 13 big as dozen, I'm not superstitious but for the first time I'm going to I'm going to try it, I'm going to put 13 cuttings in here and I'm going to see how we'll get on with it, well there, that's the, um, that's the basics, and there's my top, top will go on top of there, and that's just sitting on top of them cuttings just nicely. Well pleased with that. And that's going to sit on the top of this bed here. There is a heat bed. Actually I've got some square tops up the lot and they're a little bit deeper. Um, so I might bring them down and use them. But for me, I'd say that's spot on. I'll put that on one side for the moment. So ask me two different ways of taking your rods. It's a cold way. These are going to get a good spraying. Just chamomile tea, and that's all I need to do in the winter. Is just give them a little bit of uh, chamomile tea. I don't worry about covering the tops up where you've cut them away from the cane. They'll callosaur in a couple of days' time, go brown, and uh, of course the vines are dormant, and that, that's the secret. Never take them any earlier in the back end of the year. That's why I always wait the sauces. Oh, well, the vines are dormant. Now these have been sitting in the greenhouse since last week. If you remember when I took one, I took them from the plant. But there, there is still a little bit of green inside where I've been cutting. But the plant is dormant. The buds are dormant. That's the main thing. And of course, come springtime, they're going to burst into life. Um, all I'll be doing is just giving them a gentle spray in every every week or so with a bit of uh, chamomile tea, a bit of clean water. And it, of course, that brings us on to another thing before I go off. Is the watering can, I've always got my watering can down here there's nothing to fill it up upstairs in the tap fresh water every day, bring it back down well it's not used, throw it out 
take the walking cam back up with us in night name. So satisfying, so easy, it just means that you're not spreading any diseases whatsoever. If you're taking water out of your butts, that's been sitting in the summertime, it could be full of viruses, full of fungi, uh, full of uh, beasties, anything. So when you're watering that on top of your compost, you're just, you're just spreading it, you're spreading the virus all over. Yeah, pathogens, everything. So good tip, fresh water every day. Um, as I say, hopefully I'll finish this video off tomorrow if the ammonians turn up. I sent it away last week, so I'm hoping they'll come today. The postman's not due till about two o'clock. So if he does come, I might pop back down this afternoon and finish the video off. If not, it'll be tomorrow. Now what I've got to do tomorrow, um, I'm going to get up the plot because for us to be quite a nice day tomorrow, Thursday. I think it's the only day we've got. You know, between the shed and the hundred foot greenhouse, I've got that little piece of greenhouse that I put something put a little bit of heater in. Now we've got a couple of rips on the roof, so what I intend doing tomorrow is to get up there and get two bits of polythene cut and get that roof finished, and then I can lay the inside with it an extra sheet of polythene on the inside of the greenhouse. And then I want to get my titties out of storage because they've been up in the top shed for three months now. All my seed titties. I've got the Jazzy and I've got the um, I've got the Winston. My first two early, so all I want to do is I want to get them out of the shed, lay them out in trays, and start and sort through them. If there's any bad ones, chuck them. Any smaller ones, they're no good. We'll work our way down the beds, count out how many need. Sometimes we can put a big one and a small one in each planting hole if we've got enough and then anything else we'll just discard but we'll put them in trays and we'll put them in a the nice cool greenhouse where there's plenty of light and they'll sit there for another fortnight and then between the Christmas and New Year we'll probably get the first video done um, or we might wait until the first week in January when we we'll do the strawberries bring them inside spray them clean them and then we'll start off with the first early teas but that's uh, that's all depending if I get this um, this roof finished don't worry get it repaired but uh, for the time being, I'm going to knock off. Um, hopefully, I'll get these onions tomorrow. If they turn up tomorrow, we'll get this video finished off. If not, we'll go up the um, we'll go up the plot. I'll take some boiling water with us. I'll make me spray up, and we'll spray them apple trees and the fruit trees well up there. Just a bit of GS fluid, plenty of soapy water, nice hot soapy water. By the time it gets up the garden, it should cool down just nicely. Add the GS fluid, and we'll give the, the trees a good spraying. Okay, so I'll see you all again tomorrow. Okay, right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, we went to get up the plot and uh, up here this afternoon. Had a fantastic afternoon, just a few hours. But uh, what I did manage to do was to get the new roof on, on this little pot here, this little 12 by 12. It's adjacent to the shed, and then we've got the 100 foot greenhouse running that way. Fortunately, we had a couple of splits in here. And what I like to do with this one, I, want, I like to line it on the inside, so that's a job I'm going to tackle this afternoon. It's just uh, a nice, decent piece of polythene to line from top, both sides and down the front. And just gives that uh, extra bit of protection from the frosts. And what I sometimes like to do is put a little paraffin heater in here. If I'm bringing any soft tender plants in, I'll put a little paraffin heater underneath and I'll just, and it's just perfect here. Yeah. Self facing, so it gets the sun most of the day, from where the tunnels are. Once the sun starts rising in the January, I get the sun all day here right over to the west, so it's a perfect position. Right, so job this afternoon, get this video finished. Uh, the onions still haven't turned up, I'm going to have to um, message Harry tonight uh, to make sure that my envelope arrived safely. Um, I thought it might have been here by now, but in saying that, uh, with the, the post being a bit heavy over Christmas, <laughs> I'll give it till today. If, I do, if they don't turn up today, then I'll, I'll message them the night and see where they are. But I've, I've got some red giants down there that I want to sow. So what I'm thinking of doing is get me, getting this line this afternoon, get me fruit trees sprayed um, that I need doing, and then next week we'll have a look at sowing onions, and we'll sort the titties out because I want to put the titties on here for at least a fortnight on this bench here. Get them all out. Because um, they've been on the cover for three or four months now, the top shed there. So I'll get them all out, get them in trays, laying the trays with newspaper, nice and dry. And we'll get them laying down here because they will be the first things we'll be planting uh, in the new year, which is what our new titties. But we'll, we'll do all that in there, the first video of the year. So I'm, uh, what I did this morning, 
got my little handy book today. Got uh, three litres of hot water. But it was hot when I left home, but it's uh, just cooling down nice here now. So what I want to do is there, I've got my large spray, and I want to just take three litres or four litres. So it's not too bad. That was a pretty good guess. As I say, I just ran it straight from the top, popped a few good few drops of fair washing up liquid into it, and uh, as I say, it's nice and warm. And uh, of course, the other ingredient, the juice fluid. And all I do is I use a cup per litre, um, nice and thick. Now, a lot of people will say tar wash their trees, but there is tar in here. It is a the petrol base there and all this is going to do is going to put a drop in there because it's two and a half years that's perfect that and all this is going to do I should have had my gloves on really because uh, this stuff really does sting um, what I'm going to do is give the trees a good wash with this and what I'll do we'll get in all the crevices all the cracks Anywhere you've got holes in your bark, get a good wash with that and it'll just kill anything that's lying in there. As I say, perfect time now because the trees are all dormant so it's not going to do any damage to them. Get the cap back on. Tighten that up. And we're good to go. A little bit of pressure in there. And what I'll let you do once I've fair. Well, just at a nice temperature because I can feel the heat just starting to come through. And then a good thing with having warm water. It just helps the soapy water, it helps the soap and the juice fluid just bind together, mix together and make makes a nice uh, mixture. Just get that good. Put in the pressure. We'll just get it a try. Perfect. Right, we're all set to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the apple tree done, I'm going to get the pear tree done, the plum tree I'll leave for later on, but the main ones is the cherry tree and inside for the um, for the peach tree. So if we get all them done, and of course while I'm down there, I can get them canes a good wash with them, um, the grape bean canes a good wash with that. So we'll, what we'll do, we'll get them the bottom end there and get a cherry tree a wash and uh, we'll do the canes while we're down there, okay? Right, well, here we are. Once again, that was quite nice when I come up there. The sun was shining. But our focus was some heavy rains and some uh, some heavy winds and small rain this afternoon. So uh, really I want to be as quick as I can. Get these done, but uh, as I say, once I'm doing that liner, I'm inside, so it's not too bad. I've got me, I've got me spray all pressurised, and of course, this is cherry, uh, cherry Stella, yeah, cherry Stella, and I planted this same um, last year in the springtime. Uh, I got it from, um, I think I got it from B and M's, four ninety nine, absolute bargain. Uh, it's, as you see, now it's a fantastic little tree. There was a few little. Um, premature cherries on it last year, so I'm hoping this year with these whips that's grown, I've pruned it back. I've left a good, solid framework to work from. Now there'll be say juice. There's loads of buds on here. It's absolutely full. So all this space here is going to be absolutely full next year, and hopefully we'll get a we'll get a light crop of cherries for a say for a second year going into this third year. But uh, the, the trunk itself is, uh, is a good three, four inches wide, uh, nice and solid, some good branches off it, all open, and that's where I like uh, to grow my trees. And of course, we spray it this time of the year, and with a soapy water, I like to try and stay downwind of it, <laughs> because there's nothing worse than getting a spray of just fluid on you, going back home and stinking of tar. Uh, but what I like to do is do the front first, 
and then working way around the back and make sure all them branches where all them new buds are you can see the buds give it a really good soaking with this and what I'll do with the soapy water yeah I hope I'm not spraying that on the camera the soapy water is going to help stick to that stick to the bark just where there's any fractures in the bark and you'll find mealy bugs or anything just attempting to stick to it and if you get all them branches a really good soaping and that's uh, it only takes five minutes it's not a hard job to do just uh, don't overdo it with the juice fluid as I say it's not going to do them any harm but uh, I just use a capful to the gallon to the to the litre that's all the front done and just work my way around the back here you know, all a really good spraying. Well, it's not so bad being inside here because you've got no wind and you've got no rain. So really, whatever I put on is going to stay on. The only trouble is if I'm going to do them outside ones, it's focused the rain this afternoon. So what I might do, I might just hang fire with this. In fact, I can hear a couple of spots on it now. But I've got the grapevines to do. I'll do the grapevines this afternoon. And I'll do the... Um, <coughs> I'll do the peach tree and I think I'll leave the apple tree and the pear tree until another day. I think Saturday is forecast to be nice, so we'll see how it goes. What I do want to do is to give them all a good spraying and then find out it's raining. Right, so I'm well pleased with that. I've got a really good soaking. We'll pop next door and we'll just give them vines a good wash in the cherry tree. So yeah, the peach tree. I'm happy with that. That's uh, that's another job out the way. Yes, I think I've uh, I think I've been a bit uh, a bit wise a decision because I can, I can hear spots of rain just popping on the top of the polytunnel there. So I'm uh, I'm well pleased I've getting getting a good start. I just put a little bit more, a little bit more pressure in there and then we can oh, crack on that's absolutely great. That. It's a nice nice even spray that and especially with the grapevines um, you've got loads of if you find any loose bits of bark just strip them down to find little pieces all the way along uh, you can just say uh, cut them off we are um, we have small shears I just pull them away. Pierce are sometimes is a trick, but um, this is a, a job I love to get done. You just take your time with this. That's just a single stem there. I'm going to get that and put them all over. And of course, here's only three side shoots. Um, been a lot of work. Been a lot of work to do to the, to the vines uh, this last week. Uh, take the cuttings. Of course I've got all that to bring up here and that's why I want to get that there. Um, that's why I want to get that place up there finished off so I'm bring the vine cuttings up and they'll just sit in there all the winter. Yeah, nice and cold, no heat if I don't need it. If I run short of space in the melon house and I've got my leeks and onions and whatnot in there, tomatoes, and I can always say uh, put a bit of stuff in there and as I say I can put a little paraffin heater underneath if need be. But uh, somehow I don't think I'll be needing it this year. So all I've got to do now is to do them. We have two side shoots there that's running along the greenhouse roof. I have got another grapevine I mentioned there last week. And what I might do next week I might plant that in the big greenhouse. If I can get all the um, get all the work get all the work finished off in there that I need doing. There's quite a few holes in the roof with the polythene breaking. Um, so with this new stuff I've got it's reinforced. Uh, Sunday's gonna be me my best day up here. I might get quite a few pieces of that brought on there. And if we do, I'll get a grapevine in there planted um, and I'll start putting some of my plants out here at the far side where they're free from the frost. So that's it. Um, I hope we give you a bit, of, a bit of a help. As I say, I've still got half a ton of, half a um, spray there, mixture. What I can do is I'll leave that. It's not going to be any harm. I'll leave that. I'll do the, I'll do the, the peach tree this afternoon and then 
I'll make another mixture up for Saturday because Saturday afternoon is a focus to be nice. So I'll come back up, I'll do the apple tree and the paper tree outside. As I said, I don't, don't want to risk it this afternoon because that rain is going to heavy. It's just going to wash off whatever, um, whatever stuff I've grown. Yeah, at least I can get another job done through there and get the polythene on, and that's, uh, that's another job out of the way. I'm well chuffed. Right, so okay, I hope I've given you a little bit of a helping hand. Um, taking the cuttings, looking after your vine, as I say, just keep an eye on them, don't let them dry out over winter. Yeah, if they are inside, if your roots are inside, if they're outside, it doesn't matter. And if you're leading your, your, um, your cane in, into the greenhouse, I say, you're getting a plenty of rainfall outside, you don't have to bother. But just when they're inside, I don't like you having them too dry, Alex. You know, every couple of weeks go around, you just put a bit of water on there, let it soak through, just so it keeps the day ticking over. And it should be fine until next year. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it at that, we'll start there. I wasn't going to bother, but I will do a little video next week. Um, seeing the onions haven't turned up, I'll do a, I'll do a short one on sown onions. Um, showing you the titties in the far greenhouse, all ready for the first video in the new year, which will be the planting the titties and bringing our strawberries inside. For the time being, I'm just going to knock off. I'll get this video online, hope it helps us, and I'll see us all again next week. And of course that'll be the last one before our Christmas break and we'll uh, we'll knock off over the Christmas New Year and then we'll start again fresh in the New Year. So our, uh, if you comment to the video, catch on our Facebook page, it's uh, Jeff Holman on the plot and uh, just give our friends request. Say well one, we'll get you signed up. One most nights, I am on most nights anyway. Um, Roger doesn't play much on the computer. But uh, as I say, if you can catch us on, the, on our Facebook page, and that's it. Um, as I say, I want to get through there, get that, uh, get that line up for I'll do that this afternoon. The wind's picking up really strong now. I don't want to go much further with this because it starts interfering with the um, with the volume and whatnot. So I'm just going to knock it off there. As I say, enjoy your plots all. Still loads to do. Loads of work. I can be up here all day and just uh, doing little jobs, bits and pieces to keep me occupied. But um, I'm going to knock off now and get these couple of little bits of trees done and my liner done. And I'll see you all again next week. Hopefully I'll have the onions and we'll start sorting some titties out uh, ready for the new year. Okay, see you all again soon. Bye for now.